Today, I would like to provoke you, if I may, just to simply consider what your relationship is like with personal excellence. Right now, granted there have been many teachers and gurus over the years who've taken this word, they've, they've hijacked it, they've perverted it into something that's in, in, in some aspects a little bit repulsive or, or seen as repulsive by some people. Um, I recently read a question that kind of got me thinking about this whole um, idea of striving for personal excellence. How is it that we can become excellent at something in life? All right, not a particularly complex question, but it's one that I'm sure um, many of us would really benefit from pondering over at some point. And whilst I don't really have a perfect response to this, well, I couldn't have a perfect response to this, I do recognise and I have come to appreciate over the years the relationship between excellence and striving. All right, now, at all times and in all situations, people are either going to be striving for excellence in their endeavours or they're going to be settling for good enough. And guess what? We each get to choose. Now, in one of these videos um, a while back, I can't even remember when, I can remember, I think it was in one of the principles and the practice videos, I shared with you a story about an experience I had when I was serving in the military, holding a rifle above my head whilst my big hairy training corporal was screaming and shouting at me to scream and shout at the top of my lungs, I will strive for excellence in everything that I do. And um, after around about maybe an hour and a half or maybe a little bit longer, it wasn't so much um, just the, the words that I was speaking out that impacted me, but it was actually the, the meaning that I'd assigned onto these words. So just to give you a little bit of context, and unless you haven't watched that video that I'm referencing here, I was around about 16 or 17 years old, standing outside in this courtyard. It was pouring down with rain. I was standing there in my boxer shorts, holding this really heavy rifle above my head. I wasn't a particularly strong young man back then. Um, and what our training corporals and sergeants were, were doing their best to install in us was, was not so much um, a, a need to strive, but actually it was more about installing a certain attitude, an attitude towards striving for excellence in all things. All right? And what I'm going to suggest today is that excellence isn't so much a, a standard because it's very subjective, isn't it? Excellence is more about an attitude. It's one that we will either fully subscribe to or it's one that we won't. Some people like to settle for good enough. Some people just simply like to take this approach to their works, to their efforts. You know, just get it done as quickly as I can. I'll just do enough to get by. You especially find this in the business world. People will put a certain amount of effort into their products or services so that they can get their money and, and hopefully even just give enough so that whoever's dealing with them will, will come back for round two and give them more of their money. And many practitioners will also do this. Now, this, this idea was kind of something that caused me a little bit of conflict when I was first setting up my practice, if I'm going to be totally honest with you. Because when I was first setting up practice, I didn't have too many clients. Obviously, I had bills to pay. I needed to keep food on the table and all that sort of thing. And when we don't have that many clients, it can be very, very tempting to think, well, maybe I could just, maybe I could just, you know, drag my sessions out, give minimum value, and this will hopefully keep my clients coming back. Now, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, this was an attitude that I adopted right back in the early days. And, uh, you know, you may have not have ever adopted this attitude, but, but I guarantee that many others inside of the academy will. And it's not because we're, we're an integral, it's just we have our concerns, don't we? How can we make um, helping, coaching, practicing others um, a sustainable business for us. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about business here, but I am talking about the attitude, striving for excellence. You see, striving for excellence demands patience, demands perseverance, persistence, right? effort on our part, and it's never going to come through or apart from excellent effort. Have you ever heard the saying that we get what we give in life. If we put 50% into something, we'll get 50% out. It's kind of like the, the law of the harvest, what we sow, we reap. What we put into people, we generally get out 
in some way or another. So effort is the critical investment that most people unfortunately never make through fear or, or whatever, whatever reason. When we work or when we create with this commitment to excellence, our lives become so attractive to other people that they're going to end up queuing up to find out what we are doing and what our secret sauce is, all right? I've found this over the years. I've had many people approach me, send me emails to say, Kane Ramsey, I see you've been really successful on this educational platform and I can see that a college has become what it's become. What's your secret sauce? This is it. Excellence. Have I committed to a standard of excellence every single day in my entire life? No, I haven't. Um, but it's always been there in the background. Sometimes I'll forget, sometimes I'll go away from it for a season, but then I eventually come back. Today, I've come to appreciate in recent years that there's no other standard that we can really subscribe to in life. If we do want to make a name for ourselves, make an impact in other people, or become appreciated in our chosen field, excellence is the only way. Unfortunately, excellence often walks hand in hand with discomfort, and most people don't like discomfort, which is why some people will never commit to excellence. So, that's the context. Take from this what you will. Today's question for you is, what is your relationship like with discomfort? And how does this impact your ability to practice or communicate with other people with excellence? I look forward to reading and following your responses in the discussion forum.